Hello guys, let's see for changes in 2.48 release and lapse video recording function. This is really great news for all those who love to share their processes of creating art or for mentorship purposes. Now it's much more easier than was before. You can find it all in menu, file, time lapse video and on board it have next options. Ability to choose recording output speed and quality. Auto recording option. Part combiner. Hotkey support. Letterboxing color is changeable. After some time of using it, I have experienced it that now I can deeply focus only on drawing process and at all forget about worries related with recording stuff. Those of you who have tried to do it with the script in past probably remember what kind of challenge it was with unpredictable result. But now it's easily save all files into MP4 file format. So now you can happily draw without worries and then easily share your work process with less efforts. Solo layer mode or isolation mode. This mode just isolates by visibilities or layers except selected ones. It's like in Photoshop. You can call it from right click menu or by clicking with Alt on the layer eye in the layer panel or from hotkeys. But better usage experience with the last two. So Comparing with usual Photoshop isolation mode, it has some advantages. First one is that all selected layers would be isolated. In Photoshop you can do it only with one layer at the same time. So to see bunch of layers you should at first group them. In Parent Storm it works with all selected hierarchy. Another thing that always frustrates me in Photoshop was that if you just for some reason forget to revert this mod back, it will mess up all of your hierarchy pre-configured visibilities and you should restore all them back again but manually. So in Photoshop it's mostly useful for fast preview of layer content purpose and to do slightly improvements for a chosen layer. But for Painstorm I've asked him to do it one step further. So it's good not only for same aims, but also to completely work in this mode. That means that you can focus only on some part of your scene or object and continue work as usually without worries about all these visibilities. Cause you can add new layer, turn on and off other layers, all for comfortable work. And cool thing that after you're done, just press it again and it will revert all to initial condition. And you can focus on all those parts of work that you need. Also, it might help you to deal with lags on huge documents or on low hardware. So simply imagine this as second virtual temporal layer panel, where you can work with only specifically focused layers and then came back. And each time you will press this button, all selected layers in this moment will at once be isolated. But then you have total freedom to change visibilities of all layers as you need. Highlight layer mode. In main idea it's close to previous one, but works slightly different. I think that this mod mostly will be useful for doing line art. Like when you before usually change opacity of previous sketch step layer to polish and put details on the new one. Now you can do it in one click. Another application is to don't get lost in your work and focused on some its part without now losing general connection with all composition. 
same as with previous mode, you can call it from right click menu or hotkeys. Also by clicking on eye icon with holding Alt plus Shift. Same better experience with hotkeys. Also you can manually change level of opacity for overboard layers. Solo and highlight modes can work at same time, so you can use benefits of both of it. But for the first time it might be a little bit complex for mind. But later you will find that can handle it easily. I always follow on time requested and push it dev for more clarity to the layer panel. So really nice to see some changes in this direction. With these guides you will be able more clearly and fast see where exactly your layers positioned inside the hierarchy. Especially useful for complex stuff. So now on my opinion it's really good work for folders and layers inside it. It's more obvious. What unfortunately I still can't say about clipping masks. Hopes once he will include some improvements with a bit wider and fixed step for it. And then it will be close to ideally. Auto color folders. This is another way to give more clarity into layer panel and separate structures visually. I found it's work quite well, but mostly only for simple hierarchy or middle one. It's automatically generate random colors for each folder and folder's content, so you can easily turn on and off it anytime. And change colors of any folder manually too, because it's take into account your own colors for layers. For complex hierarchy it might not be so useful and even opposite did more visual noise. Also it's great works with hierarchy guides. Another thing that I personally more prefer to see not so vivid random colors and more minimalistic style. So a simple solution I proposed in the future to put some slider that will give ability to control opacity of only gradient part and a more complex solution to do colors inside one hierarchy more in harmony but probably it was harder to implement so maybe once it will be not sure but hope on the best now we have pss file previewer built right into explorer it's work only for Windows and it's not part of the official release. This plugin was done by one of our amazing Paintstorm user called RBZ. I have asked about this tool for Paintstorm science beginning, but unfortunately or luckily Dev is same human as we are and can't know at once all areas of coding, so he can't handle this moment. I even sent periodically emails to the company that did those plugins for Windows that I have used for PSD but without any result. After that I decided to ask in our Discord server maybe someone know even something that might be useful for them. And what was really surprising and unexpected for me that one of the users just decided to do it by themselves and he did it totally in blind and it's worked perfectly. Truly amazing. And now why I'm so excited about it, the reason that it will save a lot of time on daily basis and you will at once feel the difference. You can see files content immediately inside explorer without need open it each time just to know what exactly inside it. So I found not only cool and lucky this background story but that this person did it total free for everyone to use. Currently you can download it from his own site, but in the future I hope it will be as part of the default install process. I really appreciate this feature in the same way as any huge feature. Animation It's not that serious animation tool that you might expect it to see corresponding to the name of the tool. It's more reminds and close to the old school creation animation on paper. 
with the same minimalistic approach to instruments. So, what is it and how does it work? At first, you should understand that it haven't any additional panel or tool where you will do animation. All magic will happen directly on the canvas. After you hold an animation hotkeys, it will start immediately in the direction you have chosen. Layer panel will act as timeline that was rotated vertically. Hotkeys you can find in the section Other. And animation properties in the same tab but at menu. Here is not too much settings and many of them speaks for themselves. Here is you can see FPS speed and how many onion skins you will see in both directions. The next frame setting will choose which layer will be participate in animation. If you need jump between specific layers, choose Anim. If you need to see some layers permanently during animation, you can choose the way how to lock them, by text or by locking layer themselves. Also, you can choose to show not only layers as frames, but folders too. As you can see, it have almost the same settings except new additional one called Layer Change Mode. And be honest, without dev, I probably never would figure it out what does it should do. This setting useful when you're switching folders. For the layer you need always remain selected. Such as when you're working at moment with only line or filling. But it's supposed that you should have more or less equal quantity of the layers in each folder. Otherwise, it won't work. If they are different, better to choose same layer name. Also, keep in mind that folders animation was developed mostly to use in quite simple hierarchy structure as you see now. If you need to use it in complex structures, you should use anim setting. In other cases, it will fail. So, I think for majority users, it should be good and useful mostly for creating some short piece of hand draw animation or tiny loop separated chunks components of the one scene. After, you can connect all them together in some other application. This follows of the one global timeline layer track. That means that you can focus and deal with only one movement action at a time. Surely, you can also create really complex animation too, if you are quite skilled animator and can take into account all the moving parts of the scene at once in one shot. This tool can't export to an video or GIF files. Maybe once it will be, who knows, so how you can handle this moment if so? I did some tries and can suggest only next ways. If quite briefly, only by exporting layers or whole document, or by capturing video during playback. Just put on pause and read if you are interested. So, in most cases, as you can see, you will need to do it outside of the paint store. Now to the cons of this tool. Because it was just a side effect of implementing solar layer mode and was included just on very last days before release, I should mention that probably it's one of the rawest and unstable in place too. So at present not all will work even properly. 
Just avoid to use masks, clipping masks, too much complex color hair layers. Also, it's too much depends on hardware. So keep in mind that it might lag in if you will use huge canvas, too much layers or too high FPS. And one of the most annoying unaccounted moment for me was that playback is recording into Undo history. So to summarize, I can say that it's quite simple and nice tool that you can use for create some short hand draw animation if you need. But currently it have a lot of polished moments that I hope will be fixed later. But anyway, it's quite nice to have this tool. Fast layer selection will now trigger even nearby of the layer content on some distance. It's really handy for line art and for layer selection where too much tiny details. In past you should hover over extremely precisely over pixels. And it was not so comfortable. During using this feature, I've just realized that it's work only in situation when underneath layers is completely empty or locked. But in real life, typically, this is more rare situation. So I've suggest for dev to expand the impact on overlapping cases too. And he replied that he would do it. Now, snapping radius was increased twice for all rulers. At first, it was really small trigger distance that leads to hard usage experience. And even worse, in pairs of this past icon button, you have all chances not to get the idea how it works at all. In all approach, the straight ruler and ellipse, they have had one common parameter for placement. And that leads to this kind of weird situations, when you change position of one of them and it's immediately affect on another one, even without telling you about it. So, current fix do them independently for each other, and you can place them on canvas separately. And it also works for resetting button too. Added the ability to create unpaired quantity of the rays in the symmetry tool, before you couldn't did it at all. Unfortunately, it have its own limitations, so in the symmetry mode it will not work. But even in asymmetric mode, it give more variations to use it. Layer's opacity now works interactively and instantly show results. I have asked him about this feature all the time, and it's works super cool. But mostly. Unfortunately, it feels a bit laggy when you change opacity for the group of layers or huge canvases. And he even warned me about it, so that's why it was done before like it was. And I think that probably for the future the best possible solution will be to merge both approaches. And for the group of layers to behave same as it was in previous versions. Should be cool. And just literally a few words about fixed bugs that I know. Mostly all of them are minor, except these two. <laughs> 